Once the comb fit radiograph is going through, what I'm going to do for the nurse now, or for myself, should I say, I'm going to fill up my GP disinfecting ring. Okay, I'm going to get ready for, for when I pull these GP cones out. I'm going to pop them in here, and this is going to um, disinfect the GP cones. Um, so, hello, welcome. Today's Friday case. Bit of a bold claim, really, on the thumbnail. The easiest reroute treatment that I've ever done, and it truly, truly is. Um, this is a great case because this uh, demonstrates um, how to essentially remove GP from a lower molar. But it also gives you a, a very, very rounded experience on how I um, go on from there. And I'm going to give you a detailed explanation of my hybrid system that I'm going to be using with my rotary and um, uh, reciprocation files. And then there's a, a detailed explanation of my obturation technique. So I think the best thing to do is just get into the case. However, before we start, I just want to make you aware of that when we look at the channel analysis, Analytics, we can see that up to 50, maybe 60% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So what I would ask before we start the video, it's a really, really simple, easy and free thing to do. It's just to hit that subscribe button. It increases the exposure of the channel. It pushes me forward and it'll be really, really helpful if you could press that button. So let's talk about the case. This is a case of a lower right six. Um, a root canal has been done in the past few years, but it hasn't responded well to treatments. And you can see here that the root canal is not the greatest, but it's not too bad. That sometimes can be a bit of a red flag when we are looking at these types of cases, because, you know, you've got to ask yourself if you're doing a reroute treatment and you look like you may, maybe can't Im improve on the obturation, how are you going to do anything a little bit differently? Um, but in this case, you know, we've consented the patient and she's happy to go ahead uh, with, with the treatment. And we pick up the video here as I'm just about to remove uh, the composite filling and I'm just using a fast hand piece here just to just to pull out that composite filling and try and make as, um, you know, a conservative access cavity as as humanly possible. Um, you know, when we remove uh, the, the filling here and we, we assess the GP, it looks pretty clean, looks looks nice. It doesn't look like that it's all nasty and, and, and horrible. And I suppose in a way, um, that's another red flag because you see, you've got to ask yourself, why is this failed? Is it missing anatomy or is it just not responded to treatment? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go straight for the distal. And once we've used the high energy ultrasonic, I'm just going to have a little bit of a pick around with my DG endodontic probe here. So this is, this is a probe which is extra extra long and I'm just seeing to see if I can just sort of peel off the GP from the uh, root canal walls and I, th I think this may be not be as tightly adhered to the walls as it should be so this 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 might respond really really well to our uh, twist and pull technique and essentially what that is is we get a headstrom file we twist in the Hestron file um, into the GP, and then we just give it a good old tug. And you can see here that as we uh, pull the Hestron file, the uh, the GP cone is on the file. And, and that very, very, very rarely happens in one twist and pull. So, you know, I'm, I'm super, super happy for that. Once we've pulled out this uh, this GP cone and we have a little look uh, at the uh, the distal canal, we can see here that it's all nice and clean. So there's a little bit of sealer in there, but that's going to be removed with our uh, rotary and reciprocation files and a little bit of our um, our our activation. And then now I'm just sort of eyeing up the MB and the ML uh, GP cones. And again here they look they look quite tight, but as we sort of use our probe here just to lift it away from the walls, you can see that it's not tightly adhered to the walls. And you know, and as we twist and pull uh, the, the 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 ML, you can see here that the GP cones uh, sort of been pushed out really really nicely. And again, we're just looking in the uh, the ML uh, canal there. We can see that it's all nice and clean. And you can see that you know maybe this is the reason why it's failed because the GP hasn't adhered uh, closely to the uh, to, to to the canal walls. You can still also see maybe. Maybe this GP point's a little bit dirty as well. So all these things just sort of thinking in the back of your mind. Doing a bit more, uh, doing, doing a bit of early irrigation here just to give it a bit of a clean out. And then I'm going to turn my attention to the last uh, to the last uh, canal. And again, um, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've been lucky on two canals. Um, I'm going to get lucky on all three, unlikely. And in fact, when I screw this 25 heads from file in, um, you know, we, we have we have a little bit of a fiddle around and and there's no luck here. So this this GP cone is actually adhered a little bit tightly than it is with the other two canals. However, when I use a size 20 headstrom file, we screw this in. So we've gone a little bit lower 
and um, when we screw this in and we give it a bit of a pull again we've uh, we've pulled it out and that's it you know uh, in a way you know um, removing gp cones can can be probably one of the most frustrating things you can have in in dentistry especially in reroute treatments and um, you know sometimes you will uh, spend a long long time trying to remove all of the gp sometimes a full appointment but in this case you know we've got it all nicely out within the you know the first 5 or 10 minutes of the appointment what we're going to do now is we're going to irrigate and we're going to activate all the canal spaces and what we're trying to do is trying to dislodge some of that sealer that we can see on the inside of these uh, canal walls and you can see there's sort of some large fragments being removed from here although what you'll notice sometimes is this activation won't work as well uh, without some sort of uh, manual scraping the next thing I want to do is I'm going to check the working length. We're going to start with the distal. I'm going to use a size 15 here. So I know the size 15 is a bit more accurate than the size 10. And as we sort of negotiate this size 15 down to length, you can see my apex locator here where, 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 where we're negotiating pretty, pretty quickly. And, you know, as we sort of negotiate past the apex, we're going to back it up. And as it backs up and it hits zero, that is our our proper zero reading and then when we pull it out we can see that the working length of distal is 17.5 millimeters so that's a good start we're then going to do the working length for the mb again you know i'm, I'm thinking to myself maybe the distal 17.5 it's going to be in that kind of sort of uh, measurement and then we hook the apex locator up and we negotiate quite nicely to length again we're really really close here as so we cook the apex locator up i'm going to push the size 15k file through uh, the apex so we know we're through and as we back it up i'm going to measure it and as we measure it here it's working at 18 millimeters and then finally the mesolingual it's the same protocol okay again i'm using a size uh, 15 uh, h file here i'm just very very gently watch winding the the file to length same protocol as before we're going to push the uh, hand file through the apex so it screams like it's going over and then i'm just going to back it up and as we back it up to zero we know we're our working length so you know i've just repeated myself three times there but th that that is essentially the way i uh, gain a correct working length and of course when we pull this uh, hand file outwards we can see that the working length in the mesolingual is 18 five millimeters so once we've got the working length um we're now ready to shape and, and and in this case what i'd like to do um with this particular case is we're going to use a hybrid system so what i am going to use is i'm going to use a high flex 25 variable file i'm going to use a wave one gold 35 and i'm going to use a wave one gold large which is i believe is 45. um i i i think the step up from 25 to 40 is what you find with a high flex file is probably a little bit too of a, much of a jump for me so in this case i'm happy to use like i say a hybrid system where i'm just moving up the file system because i'm slightly concerned that maybe in the media lingual it's going to be a little bit of a tight space and going from a 25 to a 40 is probably a little bit too much of a jump and i don't want to cause uh, you know a kind of a ledge and when we assess uh, the, 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 the cavity here, we know that the, the canals are nice and open and wide, so I'm not going to use a glide path file. You know, our size 15 jumped to length quite, quite easily. So we're going to start off with a size 25 high flex. We're going to shape it uh, 0.5 millimeters away from the working length. So in the distal here, I'm shaping up to 17 millimeters. And then this goes to the length quite nicely. We're going to irrigate. And then we are going to move up to a Wave 1 Gold 35. And what you'll notice here with the Wave 1 Gold is I uh, turn it on. I forgot to press it to reciprocation. Um, so in my, my endodontic motor that I have, I can um, customize it really nice and easy. So Wave 1 Gold is uh, 170 to, uh, to, to, to 50. And then once we're going to once we finish with the 35 uh, wave one gold we're going to fi finish with our final shaping at 45 i suppose in a way you could stop at 35 um but in this case i felt like the distal was dropping quite easy to length um so 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 you know I, what i want to do is i want to try and scrape off some of the uh, the sealer and it, it's a little bit of a weird concept scraping off the sealer because um we know that the most important thing um in in endodontics is irrigation so really the 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 concept 
concept of scraping the walls of the canal isn't usually, um, in most cases, uh, an appropriate thing to do. But because I have removed the, the, the GP quite easily and I can see right down the canal with my magnification, there's a little bit of sealer on the side. You know, trying to remove the sealer just with activation is probably not going to cut it. And essentially, it's just the same protocol for the other teeth. We're then ready for our comb fit radiograph. Again, I've got this GP disinfector. My nurse is going to place the GP points ready in this kind of dry area. Like I say, I like to have this kind of like a hub ready. And then we're going to just aspirate all the canals uh, with, our, uh, uh, with our irrigation syringe. I'm using the Iriflex syringe here ready just relatively dry it doesn't need to be super super dry and then what we're going to do is we're going to fit the distal gp cone at 17 millimeters we're going to push this to length and we're going to just just ever so slightly feel for that tug back so we want to know that the the tip of the cone is just engaging the tip of the tooth and it's, it's sort of um fitting nicely at the end of this this apex and then obviously you'll watch a lot of my channels like to snip off the excess I think this kind of gets in the way when you take a comb fit radiograph and then we're going to fit the mesobuccal again 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading which is now 17.5 again we're going to fit these to length we're going to just very very gently just move this GP cone into the uh the in, into the into the canal and then um you know going to feel for tug back and snip off the excess and when we look at the comfort radiograph essentially this looks great this looks fantastic now it doesn't look instagram ready it doesn't look, look beautiful it doesn't look like you can see everything but we know that all the gp cones are to length and within, within the radiographic apex so i'm very very happy with this especially you know we look at the um the level of apical infection on this tooth and then we look at the uh you know the the, the possibility of kind of like um you know the blurring of the, the apex of this tooth and we can see that it and we can see that maybe this is affected. This is caused resorption and it's affected the apical end. Once the comfit radiograph is going through, what I'm going to do for the nurse now, or for myself, should I say, I'm going to fill up my GP disinfecting ring. Okay, I'm going to get ready for, for when I pull these GP cones out. I'm going to pop them in here and this is going to um, disinfect the GP cones. I'm also going to fill um, this with 17% EDTA. So, uh, you know, when I'm doing my final irrigation protocol, I'm just going to suck it up here so I don't have to get like a little dappen spot out. And then finally, we're going to use um, some isopropyl alcohol. And this is just to dip the cones into once we've removed it from the sodium hypochlorite. I'm finally going to put a size 10K file into my sodium hypochlorite ready at a later date to introduce the bioceramic into the canal. And then, like, you know, just going to remove the cones. We're going to place them into the designated wells. We can see in each well has been named for each particular canal. So the great thing about these sort of disinfecting rings is not only are you disinfecting the GP, you're never going to get mixed up which GP should go and watch canal, which, which if, you know, if you're just putting the canal, uh, the GPs to one side, this, this happens a lot. So once we've placed our GP cones in our disinfector, we're just going to do a little bit more setting up. I'm going to get my heated plugger out. I'm going to place my visco tip onto my bioceramic sealer and I'm going to load that at a later date. And this is going to get some paper points out for me and, um, you know, we're going to do our final irrigation protocol. In this case, I'm going to um, uh, irrigate my canals with sodium hypochlorite, activate it. Then we're going to use um, EDTA activated and then a final rinse of sodium hypochlorite activated. So you can see here that I've finished with the first irrigation step of sodium hypochlorite and I'm sucking up uh, the uh, EDTA from one of the wells in my disinfecting ring. And again, um, you know, this, this is our second step with our irrigation. We're just going to irrigate here. Make sure you get lots and lots of this EDTA right down to the to, to the sort of ends of the tooth and we're going to activate it. And what I like to do is like push out some of the excess of EDTA back into the its, its designated well and then suck up some of the sodium hypochlorite chloride which is soaking the gp and again this 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 um this this creates a nice efficient workflow you're not you know putting the uh, the syringe onto a bottle or you're not asking the pay the nurse to make more and more mess you know you're you know i suppose in a way you could decant this into a cup or a dappen's part and they just it just it just makes things all complicated so if you are concentrating your protocols into one little area that everybody can sort of go to this this makes things more efficient and quicker 
And then again, like I say, we're going to uh, do some final drying with our paper points. And we want to make sure, you know, the inside of the canal is super, super nice and dry. And we're using these matched cones here. And, um, you know, everything looks really, really nice and clean. That's, that's what you want it to look like once you've finished your shaping and your irrigation. We're then ready to do our obturation. Um, like I say, I like to get things all ready and, and well. So I'm going to pick up my GP cone here. And then I'm going to just ever so slightly air dry the GP cone. And then I'm going to dip it into my isopropyl alcohol. And then I am going to air dry this, this off. And this is where the GP cone now is all ready. It's getting rid of all the remnants of the sodium hypochlorite, which has been, uh, been, been sort of bathing this GP cone. And then once we've sort of clipped that, we've prepped the GP cone, we're going to put that just to one side. I'm then going to pick up my um, endodontic sealer. I am going to load the sealer into uh, the visco tip, as you can see here. So that's all ready to rock and roll. And then I'm going to pick up my, uh, my hand file and just put that to one side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the sealer in the coronal to mid third. Again, um, directly injecting endodontic sealer into the canal space without high magnification is um, not the greatest thing to do because you don't have any control. But once we've injected the uh, sealer into the canal, and then I'm going to introduce um, a, a disinfected hand file to length. I'm going to make sure I'm pushing uh, the sealer all the way to the end of the tooth and also I'm getting rid of any sort of vapor lock at all. And then once we've uh, prepared the canal ready for our GP point, I'm going to get our GP cone and I'm going to very, very gently push this length. And the thing with the distal canal, it's actually quite wide. So you don't need to worry about using, you know, these high tapered uh, GP cones. But sometimes if you ram these GP cones really, really quickly, what can happen is you can get that kind of bobbing effect with the GP cone. So when you're pushing the cone to length, the sealer inside, you just very, very gently push it to length. And we can see here that it looks all nice. And uh, we're just going to burn off the excess with our heated plug. I'm using a B&L heated plugger here. And once we've burned off the excess, I like to get a Mac 2 plugger just to condense it down and make sure don't be shy with the condensing. You want to make sure you're pushing the GP cone really, really nice length so the sealer gets into all the little nooks and crannies. And if you have apically gauged the tooth correctly or if you apically gauged the distal canal correctly, you're not, you're not going to be worried about pushing the GP cone uh, through the through the apex. And um, it's the same, same protocol for the other uh, two canals. And overall, we look at the, uh, the, 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 the post-op radiograph and it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks nice. I suppose in a way, uh, we look at the distal aspect of this tooth and we can see maybe there's a, there's a suggestion of maybe a double canal, but um, what it doesn't show on here in, on, the, on, 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 on the recording, it's been edited, but um, we looked um, at the distal uh, canal and we can see there's like a very small thin uh, fin of uh, uh, canal space, which is running uh, uh, parallel to this main canal which we've cleaned and what I did try to do is I tried to get um, a rotary file down there to try and shape that out so you know I could I could irrigate it a little bit easier but because it was such a thin um, fin of, of, of space the, the the file couldn't get down there so I was confident that um, you know our irrigant was going to flow into there our ultrasonic activation was going to get all the irrigant into that um into that space so overall you know i know that this tooth's been obturated correctly and overall that's the case done as ever thank you for watching the videos if you've got any questions or criticisms please comment in the section below if you've seen something today which you think shouldn't have been done or you would have done differently listen don't be scared we all like debate here um, and, and like I said before, please like and subscribe the channel. And if you want to take that support even further, we've got a membership program. The membership program is run by YouTube, essentially. It's a small monthly fee. And what you get for that is you're supporting the channel. You're keeping me independent, but also you get early access to content. So usually I'm running about three weeks ahead um, with, uh, with these videos. So if you can't get enough of these videos, join the membership program. You can see them earlier. Okay, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.